Hi everyone, it's Tarek here. I wanted to share with you guys what I know about Titan International. It's a company that you should have on your radar. I think it's a little bit pricey for me at the moment, but it has the potential to become more attractive in the future and you should have it on your radar so you know when to pick it up. But Titan International is a, is a company that makes big tires. And you can see on the screen here some of the examples. They make tires primarily for agriculture and construction, <clears throat> and they, they're international. They have facilities in Brazil and Russia that service Europe, South America, uh, and obviously facilities in the United States. Their primary, about half their revenue comes from agriculture. Brazil is huge in agriculture, Russia is huge in agriculture, and the U.S. is obviously. And, and Let's, so let's dive in. So the ticker symbol for this company is TWI. And you can quickly get a sense of their price history. So they've been around for a while. They've been around since 93 as a public company. And in the, in the early 2000s, they fell down to around 50 cents a share. There, during this period, there were strikes and the company was very different. So one thing to remember is when you look at a stock price, you have to realize that the actual assets of the company are changing dramatically potentially over this long time horizon. So back then, Maury Taylor, who's the chairman and CEO of Titan, he was running a much smaller enterprise and with much less structure and had to go, this was, this was a recessionary period and he had to negotiate with his employees and that caused a lot of concern because there was work stoppages but you can see that it, it came back and then when the economy was booming and when agricultural demand was was doing well this company was trading in the 30s high 20 you know 20s and 30s and then fell during the crisis came back when crop prices again went up but, but this is also mining so they produce uh, some of their some of their off the road tires the OTR tires are used not only in construction but also for mining and in oil. So they're on the big equipment that carries what you see them always on in the photos with mining and oil companies. So this th that took off in the beginning of 2011 and then fell off afterwards and also crop prices have come down quite dramatically and as a result the company in the last couple of years has fallen to you know to below ten dollars a share it was recently around three it was a little bit below three and has bounced back from there from a from a book value perspective which is something I talk in all my videos the company is worth about six dollars and thirty cents for book value and that's that's written down so if we open up a new tab and I go to the balance sheet you can see how you, how you do that is you take the 335 for the total equity and you divide that by the share count which is 54 so 335 divided by 54 and you get six dollars and twenty cents a share so it's trading just around book value and this this is tangible book value they don't have any goodwill they have a little bit of intangibles but I think these are patents on their they have a special tire I'll tell you about and a lot of this is current assets and a lot of these current assets are actually quite liquid so you have a, almost 200 million of cash these accounts receivable are insured for the most part and their inventory are tires which age but have a relatively long life and can be sold so about 733 million bucks is pretty liquid then their plant assets are actually quite interesting so I was gonna when I present Titan I want to share with you guys why I think from a value investor point of view we always wonder can this company produce profits and compound those profits over a long time period decades and one element of this business contributing to such a moat that can protect profitability is that the assets to make these tires that are so large are quite non-standard so it's 
where versus say a commercial automobile tire, which come out of a factory that produces thousands and thousands of the same tire. These are usually, there, there's many different types of SKUs, you could say. There are many different types of tire, and a customer calls up Titan or a dealer calls up Titan and they ask for a certain tire with a certain dimension for a certain off-the-road purpose. And all of these tires are quite different in their size and their, and their width and, every, and the, even the material. And so these guys, Titan actually makes pretty small batches of tires, which reduces your economies of scale benefit, but is also somewhat of a protective, pr provides protection or enhances the moat because in order to compete, you have to have all of these different types of equipment in order to meet the customer's demand when they call. So because the product, so for a commercial tire, you operate on the same environment the road, right? So all of the tires can look exactly the same for the most part. For off-the-road applications and farming and construction and mining, and all these applications have very different pieces of equipment and very different conditions. You could be farming in a very wet region or you could be farming in a very hot, dry region. And there could be, if you farm corn, the corn stalks, when could puncture your tire, so you then need to have extra strong tires. And, and Titan has an interesting tire that has Kevlar, which is bullet bulletproof material, for for farmers who are mining corn to prevent the corn stalks from exploding the tire. So I can talk more about their business, but that 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 is one reason why I think they have a moat, which is attractive. Uh, let's I'll, I'll name a couple other reasons, but first they do have debt. About 500 million of debt, and and then their short-term liabilities are standard short-term liabilities, and and so they have again the equity of about six dollars and twenty cents a share, and it's trading right around that. I first entered this company when it was closer to three dollars a share because it was then trading a half more than half of below book value, which is one of my general criteria. And uh, that proved that proved to be a good choice, except that I sold too early. I sold around 4.15, and I didn't re-enter in time, so I missed the most of the up. And, and that's not something I usually advise. I don't advise timing the market, because as long as your story is correct, then usually you know, most of the gains are experienced not from trading, which is hard to do, but from just holding, which is a lot easier to do. But let's go back to the company. This company has quite a few employees and and they sell in many countries and I just wanted to see there are a couple things in the investor presentation that are good to know. So I said half of the revenues come from agriculture and they have the agricultural segment generally has twice the margins. So it's definitely the bread and butter and that just that segment is what's challenged right now or has been challenged for the past couple of years, and that's why Titan's price is so low. So really, the catalyst for Titan moving to 20, or back to 25 or 30, is a, a rebound in the agricultural market. So you really want to look out for that. It could also be a rebound in the mining market. And so what's nice about this company is a lot of these markets and markets have been down for a number of years. And those are usually signals, that's usually a signal in, of, in and of itself that things might will turn. But uh, there's still some, some clouds overhanging for the next couple of months in terms of inventories. Uh, so let's, sorry. So they, I was going to tell you they have this. So one other interesting moat component here is that they have a product that they call the LSW, which is, stands for Low Sidewall Technology. And so you can see LSW, low sidewall technology. Now this product is marketed as being a better tire. And it's it's like an automobile tire that has a lower sidewall. Those You know those thin sidewall tires that all, are all in all those sporty cars and more and more on cars today? Well, they took that technology and they're putting it into the use of these off-the-road and agricultural tires. And the... What happens is when you reduce the sidewall, you reduce the amount of 
bounce. So whenever some big, you know, these are very heavy machines. So whenever they pick up something or move it or, or go over a bump, it reduces the amount of flex that the sidewall can have. So the side, you can imagine the sidewall, you squeeze the tire, the sidewall pops out. But if the sidewall is less, the sidewall can't pop out as much. And so that reduces the amount of bounce and makes it a more smooth ride. And they, so this is their technology. There's a lot of detail in their investor presentation on this you can read. I do, and it's patented, and the, the, but it's been a big challenge. So the, the story here is they put a lot of time and focus on marketing this product. And I'm not sure how important it is in the short term. It's, it seems like users, customers are calling up Titan and asking for it. And it seems like the dealers or the, the equipment manufacturers like John Deere have put it into their books. So now when you buy a tractor, you can order an LSW tire on it. But there's been a lot of resistance to adopting this tire because no one wants a tire that that it, that fixes them on on using Titan's product. And the reason why it does that is because if you have a lower sidewall, you also need a larger wheel diameter. So, and Titan is the one who produces these wheels. So Titan dominates the wheel market. They should have that. They usually have that somewhere. I don't see it. But they, they usually have a market share on around 75% of the wheel market. So they produce the the metal wheels inside the equipment, as well as a tire. And so they're very able to create this new LSW technology because they can also add attach it with their, they also create the wheel that is needed for it. But it's been a long road. They've, they've had this out for a decade or so, and their strategy has been a pull strategy, So they, which is a marketing term for customers using, they, they give out these, these LSW tires to customers, have them use it, and then have them call the dealer wanting it on their new equipment. And then when the dealer says no, they, they demand they demand that they put the give them the tire or they don't buy the equipment from that 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 a manufacturer. And that's been effective over a long time period now. At, and just it, it just got these tires on the books. So that's a big plus. But management have never disclosed to us how much of these tires are being sold. And that's worrisome because I believe that the technology is better, but unless the customers are demanding the technology, I can't be sure it's better than everything else that's out there, which the man which managers say the management of Titan say it is. But if it's so much better, why aren't people adopting it? And it's either due to the fact that people don't want to be locked into working with Titan, because then Titan can raise price and, and there's less competition or they don't think the tire is, is as good. Uh, because they, they talk about, in their presentation, they talk about how more customers are aware of, so they have right here, 68% of the surveyed growers are familiar with LSW technology, and only 45% are familiar with the other technology. So, so this, this, I'll take one more step at talking about this industry. So the way it works usually is, Large farmers may call up Titan and order directly, but oftentimes the smaller farmers will go to a dealer, and the dealer has a stock of these tires and will put them onto the machine and service and service the farmer's equipment. And one of the biggest determinants for, and this is another con contributor to Titan's moat, one of the biggest contributors or determinants of what tire is purchased is the availability. When a tire blows out on the farm, they want to get up and running as fast as possible. If Goodyear, so Titan, Titan, if Titan's tire, and they also make the Goodyear tire, so they have a license to use the Goodyear brand, and they produce Goodyear farm tires as well as Titan farm tires. So if a Goodyear farm tire or a Titan tire, Titan tire are in stock, and the Michelin or Bridgestone, which are some of the competition, are not in stock, then the farmer is going to choose. The Goodyear tire because they want to get back up and running. So, this is another contributor to Titan. Titan's moat is that they have, they say they claim to have one of the largest dealer networks, and uh, 
perhaps the most inventory in those networks so that they can they are there when the customer comes in the door and is looking for a product and that's harder for these for some of the other customers to pull off and it's hard to replicate because a lot of it is relationship based and the dealer only wants so many tires in stock right so if they have Goodyear and Titan tires then they don't they don't need that many other brands they only need maybe two other brands for competition to ensure there's competition on price they don't need five brands so that contrib that layout of the market contributes actually to some concentration on the producer side so the fact that dealers don't want so many SKUs or different brands that means that they also that that means the market can only support so many producers of tires so long term that's a plus for Titan maintaining some profitability and so they, they describe here pretty well that the problem is during this downturn when crop prices have come down and farm incomes have come down then farmers demand less of the high horsepower equipment so all the margin in this business is on these super big tires there are a lot of smaller tires that are also sold but those have much lower margins and there's much more competition so the Titan is really being impacted by the fact that these large equipment man, large pieces of equipment are not selling and there still is a it says used equipment inventory levels still remain above average but have started to decline recently so one catalyst for when to time this stock is to look at equipment levels or monitor news about equipment levels at farm dealers because Farm dealers will then, once the equipment levels get low, they'll call up John Deere and Case and these other producers of farm, farm equipment and ask for more equipment. But until they do that, these, these, that means the, there won't be as much demand. So, so this is another part of the business. Titan has a very big market share in the new equipment business. They produce the they sell a lot of their tires on new pieces of equipment sold by John Deere, Case, so forth, and or a Caterpillar in the construction space, and as so, that, so that's that's good, and that's but that's been impacted because new equipment sales are down. There's also the aftermarket, which means or the secondary market. So once your equipment is sold and used and and a t needs a tire change, then that's considered a, a change in the the aftermarket and Titan's Titan's position in, in this market is is much less and they're working on growing that they say but I'm not so convinced that they will be able to because they face a lot of competition notably from BKT which is an Indian farm tire company Balk Rishna Industries Limited and they're expanding their operations in many big ways and they have the sustainable competitive advantage of much lower labor costs, about 50% lower labor costs. And uh, so that's that's a sustainable competitive advantage for them. But the challenge is that they have to ship their big tires from India to their customers in the United States, Brazil, or Europe. So Titan's advantage is that they are based in the United States so they can ship at much lower cost and these are big tires that weigh many tons so it's very expensive actually to ship them but nevertheless the BKT has grabbed almost the entire market and or not the entire market but a very large market share 40 50 percent of the aftermarket and as a result Titan's share has gone down the other competitor in this market Firestone has been more constant so Titan really took the brunt of the beating from this new competitor. And so my worry, my big worry with this business is can it survive competition from these foreign producers? Because it's a tire. Yes, there's some improvements you can make on the tire to make it perform better, but these guys are producing better and better tire every year, and they have a sustainable uh, sustainable salary advantage and I'm you know they're they're expanding the amount of did the various tires they produce 
and they're expanding their presence in the dealer networks. And I'm, I read the forums. So another thing you want to do is usually look at customers and what are they talking about. Here, a popular forum is AgTalk. And you can search the forum. And if you search for the word BKT, tire, and you can maybe look at the last month, you can, here, thoughts on tire preference. Uh, so I, I've been looking for tires, so let's see, you can click. So a lot of people like Firestones. Firestone seems to be the premier brand in this market. Uh, so here, I'll tell my Pioneer dealer, just put a set of BKT on, on it. They're a good looking tire. Time will t tell on their wear and longevity, but they are nice looking tires and a lot cheaper than any other brand. So this is the problem, right? This BKT can produce a lot cheaper tire, and they actually seem to be performing pretty well. And to make matters worse, Titan's tires have historically not done so well. They've ruptured their sidewalls and have had lots of manufacturing defects. So, <clears throat> so that's one reason why they lost a lot of the market. Fire Firestone didn't. Firestone was producing overall a better tire. So Titan has made a lot of efforts at improving the quality of their tire, tire, and I believe that they are making that. And the evidence for that is looking at warranty costs, and Titan shows that their warranty costs have been going down as a percentage of sales, so that that's a sign that's comforting that they are producing better tires. But still, my, my big concern is why can't Chinese and Indian producers make the same tires at much lower costs and flood the market. And in fact, they, 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 as long as they do it fairly, I don't think, I think they pose a big risk to Titan. Supposedly, according to Titan, they've been unfair and they've been underpricing. And Titan filed an antitrust legislation to block or put, to add, to add fees, tariffs to imports from these countries because they, are supposedly procuring materials at lower than fair value, being they're subsidized by the government, in other words. But still, <clears throat> that that kind of tactic will only work for so long. And you know, the the, the big the, the nice thing is in this industry, the equipment is so rare that it's hard to scale up. So if the industry recovers and ag recovers or mining recovers, it's very hard to expand capacity quickly so there'll be so supply constraints prices will go up earnings will go up cash flows will go up and the stock price will probably go up quite a lot but you can never time when these these things happen and I always look to make sure that this company can survive the distress so right now they seem going back to the financials they seem to be fairly liquid. They've been able to maintain about 190 million in cash for almost an entire year at these depressed levels. And if we look at the cash flow statement, they seem to be producing cash from operations, which includes, again, interest expense. So they seem to be able to fund their business and their interest expense just from the cash flow from operations. So that's comforting that they are they're doing fine, and they seem to be improving. But my big concern is how are they going to be able to get knock out the BKT of the world and their other such competitors to make sure that they they do not get wiped out. <laughs> I think quality will be a big big point here and right now they have to change the consumers minds because right now if I go on that that forum this Ag Talk forum and I search for Goodyear I guarantee you a lot of people would just be very upset because of their experiences in the past. The other interesting catalyst here is they have a reclamation corporation. And the idea here is that you have these big tires and they're hard to recycle. And mining companies and, and users are generally required to dispose of these big tires in an environmentally friendly way or face fines. So in the Canadian oil sands, for example, they have these mining oil or these oil sands companies have they go through lots and lots of these tires because they're constantly using them on these big pieces of equipment. And they've been stacking them supposedly because they haven't been able to 
figure out how to dispose of them in a cost-effective way. And so Titan partnered with one of the big ones, Suncor, and built a, built a new processing plant. Now this is a joint venture with, with Suncor and also with Green Energy or, or one of these, something like that, which is owned by Maury Taylor, the chairman and CEO, owned by his brother. And so this was a point that worried me at first is whether this is a private benefit project where the family is siphoning off money from Titan and its shareholders to fund some crazy idea. But it seems to have worked. They, they launched, they've opened it. It took a long time, lots of delays, but now it's up and running, or was until the, I'm not sure how it was affected by the fires that were recently. But it seems to, they talk here about what, what's the benefit is you put one tire in, one of these big mining tires, and you get 480 gallons of oil, 3,000 pounds of carbon black, and 2,500 pounds of steel. So that gives you a sense of how big these things are. And using these materials, they, so they, they plan to use the carbon black, which is part of, the, they plan to use that in making new tires, right here, carbon black, and then also the steel, they'll, they'll they, I, don't, I don't know if they plan to use the steel, but they, they plan to recycle that, sell it off, and, and obviously the oil they plan to sell off too. This was a much more attractive project when oil was 100 plus, but it seems to be overall a, a needed service that hasn't been met by anyone, so they, they are the only ones who have this recycling service, and it seems to be very energy efficient, so all of the energy needed for the service comes from the process of breaking down these tires. It, supposedly there's a lot of natural gas that gets released and is used to fuel this. So, um, so this is interesting because they own, they're the only ones who have this and they plan to expand it in Brazil and elsewhere and they say that it has high margins, EBITDA margins of like 50%. Uh, that varies obviously with the price of oil and everything, but high, high EBITDA margins and maybe can produce something like 50 million uh, EBITDA a year. So it's not very big at the moment, but because that's pre-dividing it up for the partnership. So everyone, everyone has a claim on this. But it's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting growth opportunity here. But as a value investor, you would look at this as a free lunch. So if, if Titan is trading at historical book value of equity, this is considered free. You buy, it, you buy the equity means you're buying all of the existing equipment but that, and all the past earnings that have accumulated. But this is sort of a free growth option. So if, if this worked out, you would benefit perhaps substantially from that. Let's see if there was anything else in here that I wanted to mention. Uh, so, so they highlight that, so we already talked about this. Okay, we already talked about this. So, so the other thing, so so this is very agriculture dependent. So you want to look at, you can look at this website, investing.com, and you can look at real-time commodities, and then you can sort. If you click on commodity, you can sort, and you can see how the con, how these different commodities are. So corn is, I think corn is the biggest U.S. crop, and then there's wheat maybe fourth, and then there's soybeans, which is also very big. And so these are the corn and soybeans are the primary drivers of profits for this industry. So you can see if we look at corn prices, you can see the one day corn price. Now let's look at longer. So one month you can see how, you know, end of 2010, you had a huge increase in, in corn prices and that lasted to 2013. And if you go to Titan stock price, you can see end of 2010, you see a huge that huge increase translated in Titan going from ten to almost thirty dollars a share, so it's very ag sensitive. And then when it came down, 
uh, as it's come down, we've come down. Uh, so the, the problem is X. You want to monitor this. The same, it looks similar for soybeans. And then you also want to monitor copper, because this is, for example, one of the big mining output uh, commodities. So you can see also at the end of 2011, you had a boom in copper price. It went from 3 to 4. And so generally there was a commodities boom in this period. And then that also fell off. And so we're at, we're at low, we're in a low commodity price environment. And that is hurting Titan. And the, 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 so the risk is that, so, so this is a stock that's trading at book value of equity. And it seems to be tangible book value of equity. That's a big plus for a value investor. Now, I liked it much more when it was trading at half or 40% of book value of equity. And I think, you know, for me, I'm going to wait until that happens again. But I may miss, the, the stock could easily continue going up. But I don't think it's going to really move up past 10 until they enhance their profitability, which is something they're working on. They're optimizing their workflow. Or commodity prices recover. And, and that could happen very soon because, again, they've been down or on a downward trajectory for the last three plus years, four or five years. And that's a green shoot for perhaps something for it turning around. But... Uh, to make a more informed assessment of that, you'd want to look at inventory levels of farm equipment and s supplies of corn and supplies of uh, copper and, and those materials. One interesting comment, though, from John Deere, and they, they keep saying this in their investor presentation, is that the stock, the stock to use ratio for corn, so the amount of stock of corn that's held in inventory to the demand for corn or use of corn, which is ethanol and for food, is very tight. So even though there's quite a lot of stock, the demand, the stock to use is actually quite tight and any disruption could lead to a large shock to, to corn prices. And I think we saw that recently here. If we look at corn, you know, one day price, you can see how it suddenly shoots up 100 bucks. Uh, and and this is often very weather related. Is, the, is it too wet or too dry in the US or somewhere else in the world? And so, so for, for Titan's benefit, you would want to see a, a somewhat of a disaster. It's not a good thing to want, but you, if a disaster happened to farmers somewhere else in the world, outside of its core markets of the United States, Brazil, and Russia, then Titan would benefit quite substantially. So this, no, that, that reminds me of another point. So one reason why they're also doing so poorly is because they have a presence in Russia and Brazil, and both of those countries have gotten uh, into a lot of trouble re recently, and their currencies have devalued substantially. So, And the Titan was not hedged. So if we look at the ruble, Russian ruble, you can see that the Russian ruble collapsed in 2014 and 2015. So any recovery in the Russian ruble would also be a plus for Titan because they, they now have a facility in Russia that's up and running, they're improving it, and it's servicing Europe. So the, the benefit of, it, of the currency going down is, so the hurt of the currency going down is that they lose a lot of value on their inventory and on their you know, what they paid for the company because the cash flows are going to be lower. But it helps them in another way is that they, it makes them more competitive as an exporter, right? So they, if the Russian ruble declines in value, it's cheaper for customers to order products from Russia because, relatively speaking, it's less expensive. So that helps demand. And they, they have been a lot of, they keep citing improvements in the demand in the Russian sector. And then if we look at the Brazilian real, you can see a similar collapse. So this, this economy is in a big mess. So the problem is th these markets are big big agricultural markets. That's great, and Titan's in them. And they will continue to be big agricultural markets. But they have a lot of political risk. Russia, I don't need to say why. Brazil is in a, in a mess of politics and fraud that's been going on for a while now. If these countries came back and 
and their, and these currencies appreciated, then that would contribute substantially to the profits that Titan reports. Because right now these businesses have shrunk in, in their contribution to Titan's overall mix of revenues because they've the currencies have declined. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I think those are the main points. They, Titan seems to have a moat. They have a strong dealer network. That that that's not necessarily permanent, but it's something that's hard to replicate. And they have a lot of equipment to produce a wide variety of tires, which makes them attractive for working with the farm equipment manufacturers, because well, the farm equipment guys sell a lot of different types of equipment. For each equip piece of equipment, they need a tire and a wheel, and they don't want to shop around for each equipment to different different tire producers. They'd rather work with someone like Titan, who can produce any kind of tire and wheel that they need for their equipment. So that gives them a competitive advantage in the new product and the new market, but that's also down right now. And the real challenge, I think, for Titan is just this competition for foreigners who have sustainable advantage in their labor costs. What's helped the foreigners, foreign competition, is also the fact that oil prices have been low because that dramatically reduced the shipping cost. So another thing to monitor is the Baltic Dry Shipping Index. This is a index for the cost of carrying freight and you can see if we look at a five-year time horizon this this is relatively low and contributing to that is an oversupply of ships but also a low oil price and any as it, and what what I'm trying to get at is that if the price of shipping is low it's less less of a barrier for BKT and other competitor competitors to ship their product and compete with Titan. But if this spiked, oil spiked, then that would actually enhance Titan's moat in the United States. So you know, I like Titan. I think it has some moat that can protect it long term. I think Maury Taylor is a character, but he seems to be a, a trustworthy individual. He's a very big Republican. He ran. He was going to run for president. He has a Grizz talk. He has a podcast that he does. If you want to actually listen to him, he doesn't look like he's been doing it since December. But you can kind of get a sense for it. He's quite. He's quite. He's elder. El old now, but it's very involved. He's very charismatic, and he's. I think he's a pretty trustworthy guy. Uh, on the board of directors is also Mark Rocheski, who's a very who's a hedge fund activist. He holds a concentrated portfolio of companies and works to improve those companies. And he owns, I said he owns, I think, he owns over 15% of the company. And he's very invested on making sure that the company becomes more profitable and, and is, and will, you know, he will be a friend of shareholders over a long time horizon. But he has a long time horizon for his investments. So in the short term, I think this is a good business. But I would, I would rather, I would like to see Titan stock price go back down to something like uh, maybe five or four before I re-enter. And as long as the shipping and as long as competition stays where it is and shipping costs stay low, and as long as crop prices stay low, and as long as long as farm equipment inventory stay high, uh, there's a chance that that could happen again. But this has been going on now for two years, and so I, after two years, a lot of things start to get cleaned up. So it may not fall back. So if you if you want to buy and hold until, say, 10 or, say, 14, 15, there's a good chance that that'll happen in a, in a, in a year or so. But if you want to get a really good deal, you might have to be a little bit more patient. So I always look at insider trading and you can see that they people inside the company are quite bullish. The direct these two directors bought in March uh, about 150 each thousand and back in November of 2015 everyone was buying around five and four fifty which I think is a good price. And you can see before this, before the collapse people were buying at at 14 
and 10. So, so you're getting a good price these days, and you're you're. I think the insiders are with you, um, but I, the one big concern I have with Titan is is whether it can survive this competition for foreigners. So if you have any ideas on that, please comment below. And if any, if you have any other questions about this company, please comment below. So my 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 recommendation is hold it if you're in it, but if you're going to enter it, try to take advantage of a pullback to increase your long-term returns. Thank you guys. Bye.